Good day and God bless. Welcome to our time of devotion and prayer. Let us pray. Lord, help us look and find for your grace in our life and in the lives of others, especially, O Lord, as we encounter now your word. Lord, we pray for those who never really have had a, a, a wondrous, deep encounter with your word, who have either hidden themselves away or been shielded from your word by the the deceptions and the disinformation that surrounds us in life, Lord. Bring us to that place of peace. Help us to be reconciled before you into, into that those moments where truth is revealed. And Lord, we, we pray for that truth, that it will be inspired by your Holy Spirit, that it won't be just something that we find reasonable that has been charismatically explained to us so that... Just our mortal beings are convinced, Lord, take us to that to that reality that is eternal and that truth that lasts forever, that is given in Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, we pray for the fellowship that we have because of your Son and our Savior. We pray for your church in the many forms it's taken. Oh Lord, we pray for your church as you would have us be gathered before you humbly, rejoicing in your name forever. Lord, we pray for the work of your church, especially as it seeks to bring justice and peace to our, to the world. Lord, as it calls us to be better caretakers of this world. And Lord, grant us in this day, not only this moment of, of, of sharing your word, but the opportunities to apply it again and again. To, to see it lived out, to see it wondrously reflected in the lives of others and to discover a greater wisdom than even what I will say, but your eternal truth as we encounter one another in love. This in Christ we pray. Amen. And today we turn to Ephesians chapter 4 at verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. See, when God's Spirit is at work, a lot of the time, we chalk it up to us being inspired of ourselves. We just found the motivation. And, and other times when we are guided by the Holy Spirit in truth, we chalk it up to our own understanding. And when we experience God's Holy Spirit, and it, especially when it con confronts us, and convicts us of the harsh realities of our sinfulness and our troubled nature and our fears and our doubts become confronted. It's a time when that change in life, that sense of loss of our control, that giving over to God's control can cause us a sense of grief. And it, it's a hardship of coming to faith and growing in faith that we would grieve our our mortal selves. We would grieve our our sense of I've got control of everything. But what is wondrous is when we do find ourselves in God's Holy Spirit, when we do find ourselves inspired, when we are engaged in God's plan the reassurance and the peace that comes in in being in God's embrace in that way and being compelled and uplifted in, in what God is doing and how God would have things be. And it, it's not of our own and it's not of our own making, but it is a wondrous experience of peace and rest that no matter what life brings, this is still a life that we have abiding in God's love. And it's a much stronger life than what we can make on our own. What we can make on our own is limits, full of limits. And, and, and it leads us vulnerable to paths of destruction and despair where, where the deceiver gets his work done and we end up separated from one another and isolated to ourselves and not able to, to confront the, the harsh realities of this life. And so don't grieve what the Holy Spirit is doing, but be in awe and wonder at the way God's love is uplifting and strengthening you. God bless and keep you. Amen.